Hi everyone. Welcome to another video of new tricks of a synth guy, or new tricks the beatbox guy, or new tricks the drum machine guys. So today I'm testing the TR8S. It's the first video of a series about uh, the TR8S, and I got to be really honest. I am an owner of the TR8 and I had a blast using the TR8 and I'm still having a blast using it. And I tested a TR08 and a TR09 and they're really cool little devices, but I still still kept my TR8 because it does what I want it to do, you know? And um, when I saw the TR8S come out, I was sad because it looked on paper like it was doing everything I wish the TR8 did. <sighs> and sadly, it does. So now I need to buy the TR8S. We'll see. Okay, so let's talk about the TR8S. Uh, in this first one, we're going to talk about what it is, and we'll compare it to the TR8 to see which one's the right for you, because basically, they do have the same sounds, some of it, and they have different interfaces and they have different uh, options. So let's look at how it is built and what it is. So first reality, well, the box the same. I know you're going, okay, fine, what's the box? But what really is interesting is that in the box you have, wait a sec, you'll find this. You have finally, and I gotta say, Roldan, I do love you guys. Uh, I have a lot of nice friends at Rolling Canada, but this is exactly what I expect to see when I buy a device. A manual with information that it more than just a napkin than you open up. But still, if you look at what this is, it is very simple. Um, and I remember, remember back in the days when the manuals that you would see from Roland were little classes, little courses of synthesis and beatboxing. And um, it's sad that today, it's not just Roland, everybody does that today. Uh, most of the devices manual, they basically are just a list of menus, not how to use it, but what this button does. And I find that we could find a little bit more information than that. But at the same time, I say thank you because because of that, people watch my videos. Okay, so first of all, a real manual. Second of all, the look is a little bit different. It's black. There's no green siding like on the original TR8. Uh, you have still faders. Now you get different colors and these colors can be assigned uh, depending on what you want to see. So you could have red, orange, green, purple, and you can change that so that it looks the way you want. Uh, and it could be very uh, visual, let's say, for a live set. So everything that is, uh, I don't know, a kick drum would be re red. Everything that is a, a snare would be orange. Whatever you want, you can change all that and it becomes uh, your kit and visually you will know uh, that you have two kits, two kick, and you can have all of these can be assigned to whatever you want. So they don't have to follow the logic of a TR 808, 909, 606, 707, 727, whatever other seven that they have. Uh, you can just, you know, lay out the way you want it. So when you think about the whole thing, it's basically a TR. So you've got the pattern base, you can create your patterns, you can select the sounds, you can change the volume, tuning, decay, and there's a controller that can be assigned to different things. So that's a cool thing. There's accent, so basically what you expect. There's a reverb, there's a delay, so a little bit like on the original TR8. There's a master effects, so you can have effects on the master out. And there's auto fill, like on the TR08 and 09, if I'm not mistaken. So you can say every time you move to, I don't know, every time you do two measures or two uh, beats, two patterns, you'll do automatically you go to a uh, fill and it comes back uh, every time it does two, four, eight, 12, 16, 32, or you can actually trigger it manual. And you can assign a specific uh, pattern to the fill if you want. 
The rest is basically what you expect out of a TR. If you work with a TR8, this is basically the same logic and how you work with it. So you just go, uh, I don't know, pattern record, you press the instrument you want to play, you decide where it is, and then you play it. So it's very, very basic and uh, in, in how you approach it. And it's very, very easy to get around using it. Now, what's different about the S than the TR original? Well, the S is for sampling. So you can load your own sample in it. Um, and there's a bunch of really cool samples that come in it and it's really powerful. Um, so what's cool about this is you can actually load your own stuff. It's not a sampler per se. It cannot record sound. You don't have any control over the sample itself, meaning not the sample itself, but in a sampler, let's say in a Kaya sampler or a Electron sampler, like a Digitrack or something like that, you would not um, have the same feature in this, meaning you cannot just sample and then select where it starts, when it ends, and uh, play with the sample, the raw data, you cannot. So you would have to create the sample somewhere else in your computer, put it in a USB, actually uh, put it on a card, a memory card, and then put your card, the SD card, in the back of the device. Now, let's look at the back because that's where this is one of the difference between this and the original TR8. Well, let's take the original TR8. Let's look at how they're different. The original TR8 has a phone, there's a mix out, there's a signal A and B, so two mono out, external in, left and right, and MIDI. And there's, you've got USB for audio and MIDI. Now this is very simple. If you look at this one, you've got mix and out, you got stereo uh, headphone, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six assignable output. So now you only add two, now you get six of them and they can all be audio out or trigger out. So this can become a very massive uh, modular, you know, analog controller where all of these, the six of them can be trigger out. And you also have a dedicated trigger out. You've got external input like you have on this one. You've got the SD card to put your, your sample in it. And you get uh, the MIDI in and out and the USB connector. So the rest is basically the same. So what's new is sampling, of course, trigger out, dedicated, and assignable triggering out. So you can have up to seven trigger out to control something else. So this can be seen as a drum machine plus a sequencer for your modulars kit. So it, this is really where this is different. It's more uh, created to interface with the rest of your world. If you look at the device itself, it looks really, you know, close to the original TR8 and, you know, basically the same size anymore. You've got external in, you have it here but it's not on the panel, it's here, external in, so. And uh, so let's actually talk about the features outside of the hardware. You can have sample, you can have the same, exactly the same sound that you had in this one, the Roland uh, analog behavior circuitry, the ABC, if I'm not mistaken. Um, that's what mimics the reality of analog uh, uh, TR 808, 909, 606, 707, whatever it is. Um, these sounds, they uh, virtual recreated them in the Roland TR 8, TR 09, TR 08, and all of these devices that are virtual recreation of the original synths and beatboxes. Now, they have the same uh, algorithm inside the Roland TR8 S, so you expect to have the same sound, and they basically sound the same. So we could do A and B, but Got to be honest, it's the same algorithm, so it sounds the same. Uh, the only differences will be maybe in how you tweak them because they're not exactly tuned the same way. But uh, again, you could tune it so it sounds the same. Now, the real big difference is the fact you can load your own sample. Pretty fun, but also the, um, the amount of patterns and memories. Now, you've got a lot more memories in this one. And in the original TR8, you, you were limited to patterns A and B. And in your memory, you would go between A and B. If you wanted more, you need to use two patterns and you A and B, A and B, so you would have eight patterns. Well, in the case of the uh, TR08, uh, sorry, the TR8S, you have eight patterns in actually eight 
yeah, eight patterns in one memory. So just one memory is eight patterns right away. And if you have another memory, you can also have eight patterns. Of course, you can only use one if you want or two if you want and all that stuff. There's always uh, these little features like um, you could save the kit, the drum kit with the pattern or not. So you could, when you change patterns, you can change the kit at the same time or you want them separately. So it depends on how you work. On top of having more memory for patterns, you also have more memories for, for kits because now the kits can combine, of course, the original sounds of the different TRs that are built in. And by the way, this one you had, you needed to buy the extra at one point, the extension pack if you want, and you, you added the 606, uh, uh, different version of the 808 and 909 sounds, and also the 727747 sounds that you would add to buy another $100, at least in Canadian dollar, to get it. Uh, whereas in the T8, the TR8S, it is built in. Um, so you've got right away all the sound you have in the TR8, you have it in the TR8S from the get-go. And you have the same amount of outputs, actually you have more of them. So basically a TR8S is a TR8 plus, you know, basically. And you have more uh, patterns and you have also sampling. Um, so what's cool about sampling is that the sampling unit as the power to do synthesis. There's an envelope, there's a filter, there's a cutoff frequency, um, there's a, a tag decay, uh, there's LFO. Um, so you could basically do a little synthesis and create a, a baseline because it also is motion recording. And you can record in real time or you can press on a key and assign the value to what you want. So you could actually use this also not just as a beatbox, but also as a uh, note playing. A little bit like you would do with the Electribe Tribe and, and the Korg uh, uh, Volkas and all that stuff because you can actually take a tone uh, percussion and play it. So same thing here, but then because it's a sample, it could be anything, it could really be a piano note if you want or a voice, and then you can tune it. So it becomes more a sequencer and a, a, a song uh, creator than just a beatbox because of that option. So that's pretty cool. But of course, as a synth guy, I would like to have a little bit more features um, on the synthesis aspect, but there's still enough filter, resonance, envelope, uh, cutoff point. You can change actually the type of filter and the LFO. It's enough to make it come alive. So I'm, I'm not going to I'm gonna I'm not gonna spit on it for that. It's it's actually pretty cool. And maybe there's gonna be an update or a firmware update or something to even go further with the synthesis aspect of it. Let's actually listen to it. So we'll go f closer to it and actually gonna listen to the sound of the TR8S. So the TR8S it's a very powerful machine. It does a lot of things that we want. And you have, as I said earlier, we have different colors here for the different type of sounds. Let's say I'm going to bring all of them up and we're just going to go and play the first pattern. You get the name here, Berlin Flyover. You can actually go in. You can, of course, change the patterns here because when patterns select, in patterns so I can change the patterns but now you can also go let's say two three so you're just switching and if you look at the colors here they're changing because the way these are assigned let's say red is for kick if you go here this is not a kick anymore it's blue it's something else so you can have these but you have 16 actually you have more than that you have 116 if you turn this two up to 16 so there's a there's different banks and every bank has 16 memories so you can up to, go to eight so there's eight banks of 16 memories for the drum memories for the patterns so that's pretty cool and by default uh, the pattern includes the memory of the kick uh, your the drum kit you're using because i can play this one but if i go into kit i can actually load a different kit that's the same rhythm with another. Right, just for fun, let's go 
Um, let's go pattern select. Let's go seven seven or eight eight something like that. So something. There's nothing. Okay. So kick, 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 kick. Very simple, you know. I'm just really putting anything at random places. Okay, so I've got this rhythm playing. If I go into kit, oh, let's try another one. Seven to seven, six or six, six to six. Now you're starting to have different mix. They use samples. And effects, there's delay and, dis and reverb here. here these controllers you've got the tuning the, the, the decay if I want to press this I can actually I can use the pad to play it there you go okay what how do I assign this well you go control select right now it's at user so it means that each of them can be assigned to a different thing if I move this you can all be assigned to off pan Reverb send, delay send, LFO depth, instrument, uh, in, um, yeah, instrument, instrument effect, uh, user, and in this case, user is assigned to filter, but not, yeah, so it's assigned to filter as part of the kit itself. You get this. So it sounds a little bit weird right now, but I could actually tune it so when I move it, it sounds a little bit better on the tempo or on the, the note itself. So this is really rapidly what you would get sound-wise, but again, if I go kit and I move to the next one. So these are a lot of samples. This one is like... them you have wow yeah like 90 something 96 different memories there and then you've got another 
you know, up to 128. So there's 128 kits memory you can save. So this is really fun because you did not have that much in the TR8 original. Of course, in this case, you have more combination because you can put your own samples. But that's pretty fun. Now, I'll do another video where I'm going to talk about all these function here, the instrument, the sample, and the edits and the uh, utility but you'll see that when you go in deep into this there's a lot of power in this little window here um, and well that might be a little problem because it's a little window here but still what you get out of this box is amazing for the for the capacity of this thing so so that's it guys uh the tr8s tr8 uh two different beasts but basically the tr8s does what a tr8 does plus more so the only reason i would say i take a tr8 today instead of a tr8 s is that if you say i already have a sampler i already have something that plays on the sample i really want to have something that is quick to go and have the original roll in sound and it's still a very efficient dedicated box with external in with effects and all that stuff the tr8 is still a great device to be with the tr8 s includes of course sampling but if you don't need that or if you already have something that does samples then it's not a big deal for you and uh, the tr8 is still a very uh, viable solution if not a better solution because the cost will be lower and you can find it used on the market today so that's it if you like what i'm doing thumb up and uh next videos i'm gonna go through the features of the tr8 s more in details and I'm thinking about different ways of actually connecting it to the rest of the other devices. So if you have any question on the TR8S or anything you want me to test or demo, write them in the comments and I'll try to figure out how to show you how it works in the next weeks because um, this thing can do a lot of things. That's it guys. See ya.